Hello, and welcome to our session at the 2021 Virtual Prime Global uh, Forum. I'm David Steingard. Uh, I'm Simon Lineker. And I'm Marcello Balducci. And we are very happy to have this opportunity to uh, present the work we've been doing lately and chat with you uh, live while the presentation rolls. Uh, today, we'll be talking about our new tool that will help to connect research that prime schools and other <laughs> academics are doing uh, to the SDGs. Our overview today is we'll talk a little bit about where this uh, inspiration came from. Simon's going to give a little update on what's going on in academic publishing and the SDGs. We will introduce our new rating system. Uh, Marcello and I will go over some of the methodology and findings, and then we'll take a look at a couple other uh, prime partners that are working on this as well. And then we will have some ongoing discussion during the presentation. So where did the inspiration come from our uh, SDG impact intensity? Let's dial back a little bit. And uh, many of you may know that the SDG dashboard, uh, which is in the uh, blueprint for Prime, looks at collecting data on a variety of dimensions and visualizing the data, aggregating the data, and giving a picture of what it looks like to have engagement around SDGs for prime schools and other universities. And we're always proud and we always like to show our great uh, collaborators here. These have been great prime schools who have built dashboards. And this is a picture of the dashboard. Um, and that drop down is all of the schools that are involved. And in the dashboard, we have uh, been collecting a lot of information, as, as you can see. And we get kind of curious, really, about all these different impact areas. And there you see the research area. We ask the question, what kinds of outlets, what types of publications, where are our uh, prime scholars uh, publishing? And we don't have a great answer to that question. So part of what we're doing today is to look into how we might assess that. So I'm now going to turn it over to Simon. And he's going to talk a little bit about the context of academic uh, publishing and start out with his own work at Cabell's. Oh, Simon, we can't hear you. It's very realistic. Um, <laughs> so just a brief word about um, Cabell's. So Cabell's is a scholarly analytics company that's been around since the late 1970s. And what we've done for most of that time is collate um, a database of journals with uh, various different data points um, of metrics about those journals. So for example, we've been using things like citations, um, alt metrics, um, proprietary data about acceptance rates in journals. And we package that together for all of the different journals and make that available um, to our customers. Now, in the, Cabell's is very much in the, at the heart of publishing because whilst we don't publish anything ourselves, we represent literally thousands of different publishers in our databases. So we get to know a lot about what's going on in the publishing industry. And in the last few years, that colorful circle of the 17 different colors has become very prominent indeed. You've had <laughs> academic publishers, you've had um, other um, software and information providers, you've had universities, a whole range of organizations, both in and adjacent to academic publishing, have become involved with the SDGs. And they've very much been shouting a lot, uh, shouting about the SDGs and including the colorful ring on a lot of their collateral. So why is this happening? Well, there's, there's, there's a number of different takes, but really what you've got to do is follow the money because at the heart of it, you've got governments and funders who have started to redirect their funding to the sustainable development goals and related research projects. So this is great news for the SDGs. There's more money that's being pushed towards them. And as that money has increased, so the number of research projects and the size of research projects has also increased. And as a result, the number of research outputs as a result of that research have increased in these areas. Therefore, publishers who have been following the money are increasingly dependent on open access revenues. Now those open access revenues 
will be helped by the funding that's originally been reapportioned by governments and funders. So what we've seen is that there's been a direction, a change in direction of focus towards the SDGs. The money has flowed in that direction. And in order to react to that change in focus, the publishers have also made that change in direction. So they're opening up um, their journals and they're creating new journals and creating new containers of content in order to publish. So therefore, the SDGs are important, not just to funders, but to institutions, to authors and to publishers. And we're seeing this trickle down effect through the supply chain now. So as a result, the Publishers Compact, which, um, which was launched last year, has really become um, quite significant because a lot of those publishers and organizations who have started to um, be interested in the SDGs, then suddenly uh, a vehicle has been created for them to kind of um, to, um, to follow, to, if you like, maybe to jump on the bandwagon, but certainly in order to direct their focus towards the SDGs and also to make sure that they're not just um, they're not just jumping on the bandwagon because as part of the publisher's compact, they have to uh, make a commitment towards um, some kind of um, promise towards furthering those SDGs within their own organizations. So this has led to um, Cabell's. We were very proud to be the first non-publisher to join the SDGs last year. And we've also made our own commitments towards the SDGs and towards the, the ground challenges in the, in the next decade. Um, as part of that work, then what we wanted to do was to try to uh, reflect a lot of this uh, explosion in interest in the SDGs for two reasons. Firstly, because it represents um, a major activity of our publishing uh, partners. But secondly, also, it gets to the heart of something that we want to see, which is, it, which is a, um, a paradigm shift towards, um, towards a, a focus on the SDGs as the prime, forgive the pun, as the prime uh, focus for research, rather than other focuses for research, which have been in the past, where around kind of fairly abstract things around theoretical things and quality, et cetera, which whilst they've been worthy, have not really um, often um, really got to the nub of, you know, why we do research, what's the greatest benefit for society in doing that research. So that has led us to create the SDG Impact Intensity Academic Journal Rating System. And I'm very pleased to be able to introduce this to you now. Um, now, myself and David, uh, we had a very enjoyable uh, time in Davos just over a year ago. And we'd already met and hatched the idea of, of using the, the, the AI um, um, functionality that they had with the dashboard and applying it to journals. But things really crystallized when we met in Davos, because what we could see, there was a lot of talk about the future of business schools, about what rankings and ratings may look like in the future. But like a lot of things in Davos, it looked good and it sounded good, but we weren't really quite sure if it really got to the heart of what the problem is. So that's what led us to think about the paradigm shift. And in a, in a nutshell, this paradigm shift is moving standards from quality towards impact. So in other words, what we would like to see is that rather than there be an obsession in academic publishing, which there has been for decades, on the notion of quality, what we would like to see, and, we, and this is already happening, so we're just really kind of um, hoping to, to move the dial a little bit further ourselves, is move, the notion, move from the notion of quality to the notion of impact in terms of SDGs. In other words, we want to see the value of academic research and the value of the publications that result from it be respected in terms of the impact that they make in terms of SDGs rather than the varying notions of quality, some of which are, have some validity, some of which, to be honest, don't have that much validity. We'd like to just move away from that really and focus on simply what is the most impactful research that is coming out with regard to the SDGs. And you, by using a rating system, in effect, reward, reward the journals that have the highest impact in those areas. So over to you, David. Sure. Nice handoff, uh, like, a, like a good relay race. Uh, so now we'll get a little 
more specific, uh, very specific about what the tool means. So the three wheels, think of the three wheels as a rating system where more wheels is more SDGs to put it quite simply. And we wanna make an upfront distinction. Uh, and this was a distinction that was, was uh, created and massaged and, and argued about in, in Davos about ratings and rankings. Uh, and let, let's just make a distinction right, right here. A, a rating is an evaluation. A ranking is an ordination. A ranking puts one journal, because that's our unit of analysis here, ahead of another. A rating says this journal has this much SDG impact intensity. And then our other uh, metric we've come up with is about the, uh, the DNA. Uh, how, how much do journals that are, um, how much are journals aligned with the actual 17 goals, the targets and the indicators of the SDGs. So if we take the impact intensity and we'll, we'll show you some actual data in a moment, we, we can see that it looks something like this, where you would have your journals. We would run our AI and Marcello will tell us more about that uh, technique and some of the uh, trials and tribulations there as well. And you would have various journals rated with different uh, levels of stars. So effectively it's either uh, stars, zero wheels, half a wheel, all the way up to three complete wheels. And, and what's um, methodologically interesting here in terms of standards and, and ratings and quality and impact is what would a three wheel SDG journal look like? And conversely, is there really a journal that is published that has no contribution in any meaningful way to any of the SDGs? Uh, th these are all both uh, sort of methodological questions, but there are also philosophical questions about, you know, what is valuable. Um, so in addition, we have the tool will actually uh, collate all of the impact across different SDGs and give you a rating. So if you wanted to go to journal A, um, clean water and sanitation, you would uh, say, oh, well, this is a journal that I'd like to read because I, that's my field or I'd like to publish in. Uh, and, and this is ultimately the goal here. And what we've seen in that very colorful chart earlier, what's going on in the publishing industry is publishers are making available uh, gateways, portals, search tools. Uh, you can even get emails when uh, an article is published in your field of SDG number whatever. Um, and, and this is now driving how we intuitively look at uh, journals for, for quality and impact. So ultimately, in Simon's, uh, on, on Cabell's, where you have, uh, there are about 3,199, uh, about business set journals and related fields that we will eventually have this impact intensity rating for um, and, and again, because we are shifting to, to a wider notion, an interdisciplinary notion, an impact-oriented notion of research, uh, not all of the journals in that business set are purely academic business school type journals. Because to do the SDGs, you need a variety of disciplines. Um, so that's, that's one of the uh, sort of unintended consequences of this project. We realized there's a lot more uh, publishing in diversity that needs to occur across disciplines and this tool can handle it. Ultimately, and this is not an accurate rating for Academy Management Review, but just an example, because the journal we all know, um, along with other metrics, alt metric, uh, on Cabell's records, this is an individual record of, of the Academy Management Review that appears on Cabell's, you would see the wheel rating and then you would be able to hover over it and get the DNA rating and get which three SDGs are most prominent. And Simon has all kinds of interesting uh, visualization pop-outs that will help you. But basically it adds the dimension that is sorely needed. And, and it, you know, uh, this is our, our opinion <laughs> uh, that, that most of the way we look for uh, journals is, is not through the lens of how are they contributing to 
an ethical, sustainable, equitable, effectively SDG um, impact. So to learn a little bit more about methodology, I will turn it over to uh, Marcello. And um, Marcello is, here's an example of interdisciplinarity. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an ethics and leadership uh, professor, and Marcello is in our decision systems and sciences, and he's an artificial intelligence computer scientist by training. Um, so we've had a very fruitful relationship here, and then put Simon in the mix as our sort of uh, market uh, viability check, and this is how we've developed this methodology. Marcello, please. Thank you, David. Um, yes, so I'll give you a few more details about our approach. Uh, so our approach is uh, centered around the general framework that we have developed for our evaluation process. Um, you can see it summarized on the slide. So the idea is that we have data sources that we use in the evaluation. Uh, for the most part, the data sources are academic journals, as uh, uh, David and Simon were describing. Um, and uh, specifically, we can uh, focus on a given range of years, for instance, 2015, 2020 is what we're currently experimenting with. And the framework allows for taking into account titles and abstracts. That's where the current focus is on, but optionally also uh, main content of the, of the articles of the journals. Um, and these can be obtained via uh, manual extraction or automated retrieval, depending on various circumstances. Uh, so the core of the framework, of course, is the evaluation. How do we tell whether a journal is uh, um, um, SDG heavy or if it isn't? So the core metric of the framework that we have developed is the occurrence of SDG relevant concepts, which is kind of intuitive. Uh, the, the challenge is, uh, how do we know that a concept that we find in a paper is relevant? And so for that in our framework, um, we have identified or we take an input, uh, a set of identified reference concepts. And um, uh, we use those um, as concepts that are considered to be related to SDGs. Uh, the framework also um, allows for taking into account the frequency of their occurrence in, uh, um, in the journal. Um, and it also allows for uh, um, uh, specifying weights or taking into account weights, um, which essentially capture the importance, relative importance of various concepts. Um, and it also includes provisions for modifying the evaluation uh, based on the semantic context in which the concept occurs, which is very important. So the occurrence of related terms, sentiment polarity um, in a sentence in which they occur and so on, uh, those are important for uh, accurately detecting where the, the semantics of the occurrence of, a, um, of one or more concepts. Now you can see on the right-hand side, a part on iterative refinement. And that's because we realized early in the process um, that the uh, parameters of, that are at the core of this evaluation, which I just discussed, um, may need to be refined uh, in order to better match the uh, human judgment. And I'll talk about matching the human judgment in a second. Um, so for this reason, the um, framework includes this iterative refinement block in which um, various elements are used to iteratively refine the parameters of the evaluation, for instance, weights. And so we have a combination of provisions for a combination of expert input um, versus user experience, uh, manual and automated tuning, for instance, in the case of weights, but also comparative analysis. Um, the output of all this can be tuned depending on the uh, specific goal of the uh, evaluation. And so our general framework uh, allows us to generate all the various kinds of uh, um, output metrics that we have uh, uh, created so far. So the SDG DNA, for instance, the SDG 250 ratings with Cabells, uh, and the SDG impact intensity rating. 
Next slide. Okay, so um, a few more details on the evaluation. So um, it is actually interesting, as David was saying, I am AI is my area, is my field of research. Um, when I first um, uh, got involved in this project and developing this framework, I wasn't really thinking about AI too much, but as the more we talk about it, uh, the more I realize that if these, the evaluation process is really actually an AI task. Um, so when I talk about AI, when I say AI, in, in, in the present context, I view AI as uh, uh, the task of getting machines to make decisions that are consistent with um, a person's uh, knowledge and a person's objective, or in the case of machines, with a machine's knowledge and objectives. Um, and in particular, here we have the challenge of aligning um, machine judgment with human judgment in a way that creates meaningful ratings. Um, ultimately, if I, well, or if somebody more expert than me, such as David or Simon, were to very carefully look at the articles in a journal, uh, they would be able to make a determination of uh, how SDG heavy the journal is. Uh, we want to match that kind of judgment using machines. Uh, so that's that's quintessentially an AI task from this perspective. Um, and if we look at it from an AI task, then there are uh, uh, at least three key uh, questions that need to be answered so that we can create meaningful ratings. Uh, first of all, we need to explain to the machine what SDGs are. We need to give it information about the concept of SDG um, and um, their importance. Um, we also need to explain um, to the machine, give it information on uh, what it means for an article or for a journal, depending on the granularity, uh, to be relevant to SDGs. Um, and we also need to talk about um, or explain um, how information about relevance, which would have just been described in the machine, can be combined into ratings. Uh, relevance is one thing. Combining all of the relevance information into ratings takes a, requires an extra step. And so, again, from an AI perspective, there are, uh, uh, roughly speaking, two options for tackling tasks. Uh, there is two tackling tasks that require providing knowledge to a machine. Um, you can simply uh, give the knowledge to the machine. This is what sometimes is called learning by being told. It's what happens to us when we read a book or we attend a lecture. Um, and so uh, from this side, from this perspective, um, it is possible to give computers um, uh, keyword banks as reference concepts, which is actually something that we uh, use heavily in our current implementation of the framework. Uh, and we can also have expert provided weights um, and uh, we can um, uh, give the computer a definition of relevance based on expert understanding of relevance. On the other side, we have machine learning. In machine learning, you don't explicitly tell the computer um, the relevant knowledge, rather you give it examples and uh, learning is, occurs indirectly from those examples. So in our framework, we allow for a hybrid, for a combination of learning by being told and machine learning, essentially with a knob that can be turned um, and moves us from one, one end of the spectrum to the other. Um, so we can, uh, as I was saying, have experts, expert curated reference concepts, which is something that we're uh, heavily studying now, uh, but we can also um, have uh, expert provided weights, which are then uh, tuned using machine learning. Uh, and now I'll pass the mic to Did, uh, and he's going to talk about uh, the outcomes of using this framework from an expert's perspective. We can't hear you, David. You're muted. Oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, thank you for the handoff. And it's just occurred to me that the human judgment, right, and the um, data that is fed into a machine learning environment to create the standards uh, is, is a very human process. And here we have uh, evidence of that. 
if we look at uh, for our for our findings, we looked at the first part of our data, 50, the 50 FT journals. And Marcello, you're exactly right. These journals were curated, selected through knowledge and objectives of um, they were solicited by business schools to actually come up with what is this list of the FT50. So implicit in this survey response, and I'll tell you more, there's been a big update since 2016 on the FT50. Um, it's always the case that when we see any rating or ranking, uh, there's a human sentiment and evaluation and probably bias and probably myopia because we're all human. And one of the things that we are, we are trying to do with this project by using AI and machine learning is to be transparent about what are the parameters of how journals get vaunted over other journals. And it, it really is quite, uh, quite revelatory when you, you, you actually look at how this list of FT50 um, has dominated and it has become the gold standard of what a quality academic business school journal list is. Um, and I just want you to take a second. I know the print is small, but I wanted to get all 50 on there for you. Uh, these are journals that most all of you uh, know, maybe even every one of them. Uh, many of you have published in them. So this is, this is what we might call uh, the un-SDG curated set of journals. So this is half of our data. And the next half of our data, oh, well, let me just give you, uh, so this just, uh, Simon just sent this to me uh, the other day. It's, it's not even officially published. This is the pre-published. Andrew Jack is, uh, he was involved in Davos at the uh, Dean's Dialogue about ratings and rankings. And he produces the FT50. And um, he, is, he has been for years very rigorous uh, about his standards of, of what counts in the 50 and not. Um, well, if, if you read the little abstract part of the abstract here, uh, the fresh methods, metrics, and standards is what we are looking at today to uh, be more intentional about the way we think about the journals that, that we all publish in. And uh, a, a note, which is not insignificant, it's not just about taking our passions uh, for, for our prime subjects and publishing them. It's about job security. It's about tenure. It's about academic performance. And one of the, the other dimensions here is that prime uh, researchers who are on the edge creating uh, new paradigms, new methods, uh, new pedagogy, uh, may not be able to find themselves easily publishing in those FT50. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So where does the uh, second half, or I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this slide because this is uh, trying to get the juggernaut of all of our analysis in one place. And later on, I'll break, I'll break this out. So the pink list of journals are the FT50 journals that I just showed you. The green journals are what we call Simon Specials. These are journals that Simon, uh, through his expert knowledge of seeing the comings and goings of, of journals and, and the kind of fads about what's popular, uh, he identified, um, and again, it, all of this process, whether it's explicit or implicit, always starts with human judgment. And, and Simon gave us a list of 50 journals that are in Cabell's that are not in the FT50, but his intuition was these journals have a lot of SDG impact intensity. So the, the um, hypothesis, if you will, was we wanted to test using the tool if of uh, rate all of these hundred journals and come up with uh, some, some statistics of where the journals are ending up in terms of SDG impact intensity. And uh, it's, it was both confirmatory and also uh, motivating to see the results that you see before you. So let me just kind of narrate uh, the results. Um, well, the green journals are Simon's journals and they have en masse 
uh, almost, it's almost a 50-50 picture, the highest SDG impact intensity ratings of the total set include pink FT50. There's a couple of FT50, that's your oh, business, uh, business ethics, research policy that have creeped in to the 50, but uh, looking at the charts here on the right, uh, we're seeing almost a, a complete bifurcation of impact. And let me just be clear to state the finding from the hypothesis. The hypothesis is that the FT50, because they are not calibrated to reflect uh, ethics, sustainability, uh, equity, um, justice, and all the other issues that are covered by the SDGs, uh, they are not, by and large, uh, demonstrating a lot of a great degree of SDG impact and intensity, whereas the Simon specials, the one that the ones that are not FT50 are. So this is where we were very excited to find something substantive in the data. And, and in full transparency, uh, as Marcello was detailing, there were several journals that were worthy uh, that, that you, you understood that they were good contributors to SDGs, but they didn't score as well uh, because the language of that journal might have been very technical. There's a, a journal about social accounting that didn't initially score very well. And we said, well, wait a minute, something is wrong with that because how could a journal about social accounting not have a connection to SDG? So, so there's a great deal of, of theoretical assumptions that go on here. And this is where the real work begins. And in, again, in full transparency, uh, is the tool perfected? No, but we know enough now to feel confident that we can keep iterating. And I will come back to this list. Uh, we'll have a little breakout workshop at the end of uh, the session today. So I'm gonna let Marcello finish up with some concluding uh, ideas about methodology. Thank you, David. Um, so yes, this is actually a perfect segue. Um, David was talking about the fact that uh, we ourselves needed, first of all, to understand uh, what characterizes the SDG relevant, SDG intensive journal. Um, and um, in the current state, so I talked, so far I talked about the framework, uh, the general framework. Well, one thing is to have a framework and define it. Uh, another thing is to actually implement it. So the implementation of the framework is uh, currently just a partial snapshot of it. And uh, in the current state, we have uh, heavily explored uh, the use of learning by being taught because that was the best way for us to, first of all, educate ourselves and understand what, what it is that makes a journal um, SDG heavy, SDG relevant. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, um, we, um, our current implementation uses um, expert curated reference concepts um, and uh, uh, expert provided weights, a very coarse set of weights. Uh, we don't have the uh, necessary understanding yet to have refined sets of weights. Uh, but these weights um, and even the set of reference concepts um, have been iteratively tuned based on expert feedback and uh, comparative evaluation, just as Dave was describing. Uh, the future is actually very interesting, at least from a from my technical perspective, for sure, um, because uh, the main focus uh, of uh, planned extensions um, is to understand how we should respond to discrepancies between human judgment and machine judgment. Uh, and on this side, um, we plan to, um, um, to use more heavily and to explore more heavily the use of machine learning. Uh, there are uh, machine learning methods that uh, would allow us to crowdsource uh, user feedback, um, for instance, through the uh, Cabell's interface. Um, there's also a possibility of uh, using machine learning, applying machine learning to user surveys. Um, experts can, uh, sorry, I meant experts. Experts can uh, analyze articles and provide their understanding of these articles through quick surveys. Uh, and then machine learning can extract from that an understanding of uh, what is relevant and what is not, and adjust uh, what the system thinks about it. Uh, there's still a lot of work 
to be done on the learning by being told side, however. Um, it is possible to provide uh, more knowledge and more complex knowledge to the system, uh, capturing better in a more refined way what SDGs are, their importance, what makes a journal uh, SDG relevant. And then one final item that we are uh, um, planning to uh, take on as our next step is that of transparency, or to use a hotter uh, AI term, uh, explainability and uh, from the era of explainable AI. Uh, so any modern uh, AI system wouldn't be complete if it was not able to explain why uh, it drew the conclusion that it did. Um, and so in, in particular, because of the um, delicate, of the importance uh, and delicate importance of uh, uh, the judgments that our framework and our system makes, um, it is, it is going to be fundamental uh, to include a component that allows the system to explain, uh, to provide explanations for, uh, for its ratings. And uh, they should be rooted in uh, um, information that is immediately available to user, users, such as the, type, the characteristics of a journal or the characteristics of uh, articles published in that journal. I hope this gives you a um, reasonable idea of uh, how we are doing what we're doing. And now I'll uh, pass the mic back to David, uh, who's going to uh, talk more about the um, high level aspects. Thank you, Marcello. Um, uh, just an insight from when uh, every time I, I hear Marcello uh, go, go deeper on this, uh, the, the idea that we are going to solicit multiple uh, kind of stakeholder inputs. Uh, from users of journals, from publishers of journals, uh, that, that, that really is going to sort of democratize uh, and, and really provide a, a kind of multilateral framework for how we consider uh, journal quality and impact. And if the organizing principle is SDGs, if SDGs are at the center of that evaluation, and we can align through the SDG Publishers Compact and all the publishers and all of our new journal rating systems, uh, alignment and conversion of SDGs, we might actually accelerate in a meaningful way the attainment of the SDGs by Agenda 2030 when uh, the goals are due. And there is, uh, we have less than a decade. So this is, uh, I think in the larger sense, a, a way to marshal the forces of academic publishing toward the SDGs. Uh, and we are not alone. Uh, of course, other prime uh, schools, uh, Julia and Kathleen at Lang and Wilfred uh, at Rotterdam, uh, we are in conversations and uh, collaborating and, and trying to uh, put our heads together to, in, to continue to evolve our, uh, our thinking and the accuracy of our outputs here. Um, I think I still have a minute, so I'm going to share, as promised, and ask you to do a little work, participants. Let's call it a workshop for the next few minutes here. Um, so this is, I make it smaller? Can you, no, it's too small. Okay, so this is the actual sheet of the list that you saw uh, earlier. And what I'd like you to do in the chat is I'm going to scroll through here slowly. I would like you to if any of these journals are journals in which you've published, um, so not whether you think they're SDG impact intense or not, uh, just, just a fact of if you've, if you've published in them, um, or yeah, let, let's open it up. If you've published in them or you feel that they're worthy of of being highly rated as SDG impact intensity. So we just kind of get an idea of, of which of these journals are, are on, in, in your personal zeitgeist of what's important in publishing for SDG. So you can write the name of the journal in the chat and I'll kind of scroll through here for a minute. I think we have a couple minutes. Uh, gender management is a popular one amongst uh, prime scholars. Sustainable development, that, that actually, um, uh, a lot of the sustainability journals that have the word sustainability in them, as Simon could uh, uh, sort of opine on, uh, have been 
uh, excluded from a lot of the more mainstream considerations of, of quality academic business journals, but they are uh, riding high in SDG impact intensity. So these are some of the new ones here, moving down. Right, uh, and, and this is one of Simon's favorites, the hydrology and earth system sciences. How could we do business school scholarship about business uh, without having some understanding of, of the impacts of our scholarship in the actual earth that we live in? Renewable energy, oh. Okay, that was not good. Are you seeing the list now? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, my narration of the list uh, stands. So this is the list and just please put in the chat uh, any of the journals that you feel are SDG impact intense. Oh, that was the one I was just commenting. Sorry, you couldn't see it. Now we see it. Uh, hydrology, hydrology and Earth System Sciences. It makes sense to have an interdisciplinary connection to journals that actually talk about the Earth. So um, uh, a consumer packaged goods company should not make anything without considering its impact on the Earth, its cradle to grave, its life cycle, its reduce, reuse, recycle implications. Um, and then I said journal business ethics. Uh, that one we recalibrated. And actually, I'm getting an idea because we're at a live conference here. Um, we should. Uh, I'm I'm working with the Prime North America chapter. Um, uh, Kent Williams at uh, Dalhousie University in Canada, and maybe we should, as a part of a research initiative there, start to survey some of the prime faculty and get this. Uh, get some more, more data. So then here you see the bottom here, uh, the familiar FT50. Uh, so this is another one that's curious that we have to sort of recalibrate. How is it that environmental ethics uh, did not score uh, very well with the tool? So one of the uh, iterative processes that uh, Marcello was talking about is we have the capacity to change words. And let me show you something that's very interesting in the final here. I think I have a couple minute. Um, so we have word clouds. So here is the word cloud. Let's see if this would come up. Oh, great. Word cloud for natural resources. So this is natural resources form. And this is actually a publication from UN Publishing. This is a United Nations journal. And it is not shocking in any way that you see uh, these words. And so, of course, the size of the words is related to the relevance and the frequency, right? So that makes a lot of sense, right? Now, uh, and it just happens that this is the last rated journal, um, which does a lot with portfolio, modern portfolio theory and your traditional financial metrics. And just look at the difference, see if you can pick this up. So this is, these are the keywords and um, th now they are words that the words have different meanings, right? Like do the dollar sign, for example, could be maybe they're spending, talking about in articles, spending money on sustainable development and economic development uh, initiatives to advance the world. But uh, the, the tool is pretty robust. And, and these are the kind of thing, and equity there is not the kind of equity for sort of justice equity. It is, it is financial equity. So that is, uh, I think we are about out of time, the last minute. So again, if you can just take a minute, any of these uh, look appealing to you in terms of SDGs or journals that you published in. Um, and I'm also making the assumption that if you published in these journals, you're working on topics that are SDG intense because most of our audience are, are fantastic prime colleagues around the world who are trying to advance the SDGs through their teaching and, of course, subject of today, their research. So thank you, everybody. I think the last minute is over, and um, we've, we've enjoyed this parallel processing and chatting with you. And if you have any uh, questions or follow-up or would like to participate, please feel free to reach out and contact us.